Jobs, jobs, jobs. We need jobs. We can work ourselves out of this mess if we can all get to work and actually start uh, taking care of ourselves. Uh, one of the ways um, to do that would be to turn off the spigot to the Middle East and create those jobs here in America. But we have a thing called an environmental impact statement. We have the NEPA process. We have the uh, EPA, um, Kyoto treaties. We have everything in the man and the moon seem to state that we need to have $10 a gallon of fuel. Uh, how can we get out of this mess? And can you, as a, as a one person in, in the house, actually do something to make a difference? Well, first of all, you have to understand why the rules and regulations benefit certain uh, specialist, in special interest groups. There's a fund called the EJA Funds, Equal Access to Justice Funding. What it basically was, was a law to help out military families and individuals go up against the federal government. Well, what is that end up happening is that the environments have actually figured out they get a free pass. They actually sue the government. The government gives you taxpayer dollars un unended. There is no limit. Well, what we started doing in natural resources, and actually Paul Gosar started doing, is that we started asking any group coming before our committees, is have you profited from each of funds? When and where and how much? And if you were a business, when and how much was used against you? So you have to certify what you're actually dealing with in this dollars. We think it's over a billion dollars, but we need to have those assertions. But we also have asked the DOJ, the Department of Justice, over and over again, and will not receive it. But what we also have to do is challenge those rules. In fact, what we did as a freshman class is we challenged. Congress builds these uh, bills to turn into laws, but they turn them over to agencies, never to see them again. Doesn't Congress have the ability to oversee look at rulemaking process? And the answer is yes. And we've actually passed a number of those rules and regulations. That is the RAINS Act. The RAINS Act says that any rule that has a cost of over $100 million must come before Congress by the House or the Senate to get a thumbs up before it can be actually implemented. Here's our start. But this is the way you've got to get the rules and regulations out of the way so America then can be empowered. And what we do is we also have to make sure that we're doing things that our community is great about. And that is pushing the envelope. In the copper mine, we did exactly those, put limitations on our um, NEPA to one year to make sure that a bureaucrat couldn't overstep the dictations by Congress. Essentially, what's gone on in the federal government, we have bureaucrats that now run the government. The Congress no longer runs the government. They've essentially set the bureaucrats on autopilot. They do whatever they want to as long as they stay within their rulemaking authority. To me, that's a big problem. I actually think that these kind of things should go back to Congress for a vote. Because I think you con your congressman, as a representative of you, should be asked at what he thinks on each and every one of these things. We've got an issue, I live in Lake Havasu City, uh, the desert behind Lake Havasu City, there's a lot of hills and people like to go ride their quads, motorcycles, um, side by sides. They like to go four wheeling out of this area. Well, the BLM has decided for some reason that they should shut this area down. They did, and they did it in kind of an insidious way. They, sat, they actually co-opted the off-road groups and the horse groups and got them to go out and map trails under the uh, assumption that, and actually not the assumption, they told them if their trail got on the map, it would not be closed down. Now, a few years later, they're closing down approximately 70% of the desert, which is going to have an economic impact on my community because we have snowbirds that specifically come to the Lake Havasu City area so that they can, they can ride their off-highway vehicles. That vote should go back to my congressman. They should, my congressman should let him know what does he think on that issue. And he should have to vote on that issue. It should not be some bureaucrat that works for the BLM that gets moved around every two years so he doesn't even know the community that he works in. This is what we really need to do. We need to get government off of, of autopilot. We need to take control away from the bureaucrats. We need to put it back into Congress where it belongs. That's where the authority exists. They should never, ever give their authority away because it was given to them by us and the Constitution. Thank you. We're all against the bureaucracy and the regulation, obviously. Your question specifically was about the economy, about jobs, and you mentioned something about energy. And I started earlier tonight, I talked about the fear and the concern, the apprehension of, of probably a lot of you here tonight, 
I know myself and the very reason why I'm running for Congress and people across our country have every right to be concerned and to be fearful about the future of America. Because we have a government that has no plan to pay its debt. We have a government that has no plan to pay its debt. Two of us here tonight say we shouldn't borrow more and that's our plan. Folks, that's Obama's plan is to print more money and kick it to the next election and to blame Bush and everybody else and divide Americans. We've got to pay down this debt. We can't borrow more money. How come this was right for every other congressman that's a Republican in our state? Our party stands for fiscal conservatism. Less government, not more. How about rolling back the size of government to 2005 levels? That spending is equal to the revenue that we're bringing in this past year. Why don't we tighten our belt instead of just reducing the growth of this government? And instead, I still haven't heard an explanation about how can you justify voting to increase the national debt by $3.7 trillion and then tell people down in Yuma a week ago, you don't understand and then to lecture people about why we don't understand this vote. I still don't understand it, and I still haven't heard. Boy, I'd sure like, sure like to rebut that. Both my opponents have, I think, Senator Gould has endorsed the Republican study uh, plan for the budget. The sheriff over there has endorsed um, the Paul Ryan plan. Both raised the debt ceiling at minimum five the reason we do the debt ceiling is because we're paying in arrears, paying for our debt in which we guarantee. That's what we look at. I am the only Republican that voted to cut $1.2 trillion and ask for a balanced budget initiative to come before the floor. Because I recognize the problem is that in order to have a balanced budget, you must have a balanced budget constitutional amendment, of which I was a co-sponsor of every single one. Ask them, do they really understand a budget? Do they really understand the mechanism of going on in Washington, D.C.? Because they obviously don't. Apparently, the congressman is mistaken because I have not endorsed a budget plan. Uh, so I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, in, in reality, you don't need a balanced budget amendment to balance the budget. It would be great if you had a balanced budget amendment, but you really don't need that. What you need is congressmen with guts to actually balance the budget. We put out a balanced budget in the, in the state legislature every year because we're constitutionally required to. The problem with balanced budget amendments is if they're not drafted tight enough, that it, it's problematic because people there's wiggle room and people play games. Really what you want to do is you want to limit government spending to a percentage of the gross domestic product. That way you truly limit government. That's a great way to do it. But it doesn't take a balanced budget amendment. It takes a Congress with some guts and intestinal fortitude to actually do that. I balance my budget. Each of us personally have to balance your budget. And this living on borrowed money, borrowing from literally some of the enemies of our country, and then stopping us from expanding our economy and free market principles through energy exploration. If anybody's gonna protect our environment, America is. We have, and it's even the Obama administration say 25% of the oil reserve that's just been untapped is still here in America. And if you're talking about borrowing money, it's just not borrowing money that I have a problem with Obama. It's signing a letter with 60 Democrats to the House to a super committee, which I disagree the fact that we even have a super committee. We elect members of Congress to be our vote in Washington, not to give it to a super committee, and then they decide. And this letter says, use all means of revenue enhancement. That's Washington speak, folks, to raise taxes. Raising taxes and raising our debt is kicking this can down the field even further to the next election, and we don't have to the next election to wait.